tested. The Samsung Focus is the first Windows Phone 7 phone I've tested, and my first impressions were very positive. The phone looks and feels great, it sports a gorgeous screen, and it's fast. Stupid fast. While the Focus may look a little plain Jane compared to some of the gimmick-equipped competition, this phone is lean, mean, and oh-so-speedy. That doesn't mean there isn't room for improvement, though, in both hardware and software, especially when compared to the iPhone 4 or the latest Froyo-equipped Android phones. But the Focus is nonetheless an impressive early Windows Phone 7 handset. Samsung packed the Focus with capable hardware, a speedy 1 GHz Cortex-A8 CPU, 256 megabytes of RAM, and a gorgeous 800x480 Super AMOLED screen. It's true, the Focus's Cortex-A8 processor isn't as capable on paper as the Hummingbird and the Captivate, or the A4 and the iPhone, but you wouldn't notice that when using the phone. You would notice, however, the paltry onboard storage. With just 8 gigabytes of flash memory on the phone, it's nice that Samsung included a micro SD card slot capable of accepting up to a 32 gigabyte card. Unfortunately, using that card slot can be nightmarishly difficult. In order to activate the card, you need to factory reset your phone, wiping your settings and data. However, the phone is notoriously picky about micro SD card performance, and there's no published list of compatible cards. If that isn't bad enough, you can't really test different micro SD cards in the phone. Once you initialize a card in the Focus, you can't use that card in any other devices. That sucks. The phone's design is great. This is the second phone I've tested with Samsung's side-mounted power button, and I love it. It's perfectly positioned for easy one-handed operation if you hold the phone in your left hand. While the Focus's chassis is made of plastic, it feels sturdier than many of the other phones I've tested, and I don't fear dropping this phone like I do with the Nexus One, the HTC Incredible, or especially the iPhone 4. The Focus also includes an FM radio. It uses your headphones as the antenna, but it includes an FM radio. Yeah, FM. Radio. Woo. The bad news is that the Focus's 5 megapixel camera seems very similar to the one in the Captivate. It works great in outdoor lighting, but inside or at night it gets grainy. Samsung did include an LED flash, which helps some, but this camera can't compare to the iPhone 4s. Because Windows Phone 7 doesn't support tap to focus, I also had some problems getting a good focus, especially in low light situations. I did encounter some minor phone problems with the focus in my testing. When using a Bluetooth headset or speakerphone, the speaker volume occasionally went up and down without any input from me, making it difficult to hear calls. The Focus also uses a different wiring scheme than most US smartphones for the headset. The mic on Apple compatible headsets won't work with this phone. Instead, you need a Nokia style headset. This is the first modern smartphone I've tested that didn't use the Apple headset scheme. Of course, you can't really separate the Samsung Focus from its operating system, Windows Phone 7. There's a lot I like about Microsoft's new phone OS, even at this relatively early date. Integration with both common webmail providers and Outlook were great, including full contact and calendar syncing. And while the mail client doesn't have a universal inbox view, the fact that you can shortcut each account on the home screen is almost as handy. And I really like the home screen metaphor in general. I want to see a screen that's chock full of data whenever I look at my phone. While a few apps, mail, photos, messages, and phone, have home screen tiles that update when the app isn't running, most don't, including many from Microsoft. This is clearly a missed opportunity to show off a unique feature of the platform. That said, the phone's lock screen contains lots of useful information, with the relevant info about your next appointment, as well as new email, text, and call notifiers. Windows Phone 7 has the best soft keyboard I've ever used. It's fast, responsive, and makes it easy to pick the word you were trying to type instead of the one that's most likely to offend your boss. Unlike many Android phones, the capacitive touch buttons along the bottom edge of the screen are far enough away from the screen's edge that they're difficult to press by accident when you're typing. And thanks to the Zune software built into the OS, this is one of the most media-capable smartphones I've ever carried. Whether you're watching videos, listening to podcasts, or just digging into the latest MP3s from your favorite artists, the phone handles ID3 tags properly, is responsive, and has some great art visualization features. And if you're into the whole music as a service thing, you can listen to ZunePass music on Windows Phone 7 phones. Windows Phone 7 does lack some key features. Mobile Internet Explorer is promising, but it doesn't support HTML5 or Flash. An update with support is due in early 2011. And although some core apps can multitask, you can listen to music while you check your email, 
Third-party apps have to use iOS-style push notifications to mimic multitasking. This means if your phone sleeps while you're in a third-party app, it stalls when you wake it, while whatever app you were running previously relaunches. Yes, you can exit the app by mashing the home button, but this isn't ideal. And just like early versions of the iPhone OS, Windows Phone 7 doesn't really have a copy-paste function. While you can copy-paste in a few apps, you can't grab text from emails, which is a major oversight. There are also problems with sound control. Like early iOS, Windows Phone 7 doesn't let you use your own ringtones or text tones. In order to customize your ringer, you need to buy an app from the marketplace. This is every bit as obnoxious as it was on the first generation iPhone. Worse, the ringer volume is tied directly to app volume. Press the volume rocker to turn your volume down in an app or game, and you turn your ringer down at the same time. This is poor design. And on the marketplace tip, the Windows Phone 7 doesn't give good app store. Search frequently doesn't work as expected. You can't search within description text or limit your search results to a specific category. And results include all Zoom content, including music and movies. Worse, where the app store should showcase the best apps the platform has to offer, instead it feels like the shovelware store is typically found on feature phones. Microsoft seems to be giving, or selling, high-profile placement to bad apps or simply using the store to push music that most users really aren't interested in. And no thanks, Microsoft. I don't need the new Black Eyed Peas album. I do love that you can uninstall any of the shovelware that ships on the phone, just like you can any other app, but the marketplace pales in comparison to the curated experience of the Apple App Store. Both the best and worst things about Windows Phone 7 are that it has a very different feel than the smartphone OSs we're familiar with. The text and white space based Metro UI is a refreshing change from screen after screen of app icons. I love that it uses screen space for content and minimizes the space taken by frequently repeated UI elements. It just feels spacious. There are already some impressive apps, although not as many as I'd like, and Windows Phone 7 has some tricks that the iPhone still can't match. You can even use multiple computers to put music on your phone and can add new content to the phone over Wi-Fi. That is awesome. This is an exciting first release filled with promise, and the Samsung Focus is an eminently usable phone. But before you buy, know that Windows Phone 7 still has some rough edges and probably will remain that way for a while, at least until Microsoft figures out what we want from a modern smartphone. For Tested, I'm Will Smith. Thanks for watching.